Shalom. Good morning. All praise and glory to the mighty Most High, our Creator, who is one God, the Spirit, the living Spirit of truth, the self-existing, eternal One. There is none beside Him. Okay, we're jumping into Genesis uh, chapter 31 a little bit. A, a backdrop to the story, what happened in the previous chapter is that Jacob had went to work for Laban. He had been sent back to his homeland uh, to find himself a wife because he was directed to do so from Isaac. And um, <clears throat> Isaac sent Jacob back home to his land to meet with his relatives and then um, Leban met with him. Uh, Rachel had met Jacob in the field and ran home and told her father and he prepared. And then um, Jacob had eyes for Rachel. Rachel ends up with Jacob, but before uh, Rachel ends up with Jacob, Laban pulls a smoothie on Jacob and hands him his oldest daughter before he gives her before he gives Jacob his youngest daughter because it's their customs that they don't give the oldest daughter away before the younger daughter so Jacob gave up five years so Jacob was screwed by his uncle because he lied to him uh, and clearly he's done some other shady things as too, as well as all of them. All of them seem to be doing some shady stuff. All right, so that's the backstory. Now Jacob has allowed um, Laban's uh, crops, his cattle, everything to um, flourish and grow because of the blessing through Jacob. Because the Lord did say that the Gentile will be blessed through those that bless God's chosen children. But think about it. Jacob was blessing, was doing work for Laban, right? And then Laban screws him, right? The man was getting blessings through Jacob, and then the man screwed Jacob. You think that the Lord's going to allow this man to screw Jacob? Well, do you think that the Lord would allow Jacob to screw his older brother? It seems like everybody's screwing, screwing the pooch in these stories. Just saying. You know, put it out there. Okay, so Jacob, uh, beginning at Genesis 31, Jacob learned that Leban's sons were saying Jacob had taken all our father owned and has gained all his wealth by what belongs to our father. And Jacob noticed that Levin's attitude toward him was not what it had been. Then the Lord said, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> then the Lord said to Jacob, go back to the land of your relatives and I will be with you. So Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah to come out to the field to where his flocks were. He said to them, I see your father's attitude has not, is not what it once was before. But the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have worked for your father with all my strength. Yet your father has cheated me. He changed. He shortchanged me. He changed my wages ten times. So... Here you're absolutely being told now that Levin is screwing. I mean, Jacob's feeling like he was screwed, right? Yeah, so. Um, with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me with my wages ten times. However, God has not allowed your father to harm me. If he said the speckled ones will be your wages, then all of the flocks gave birth to speckled young and if he said that the strict the streaked ones will be your wages, then all of the flock bored streaked one streaked young. 
So God has taken away your father's livestock and given it to me. In breeding season, I once had a dream where I looked up and saw that the male goats were breeding with the streaked, speckled, and spotted. The angel of God said to me in a dream, Jacob, I answered him, here I am. And he said, look up and see that the male goats mating with the flocks are streaked, speckled, or spotted. For I have seen all that Leban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and made on vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. Then Rachel and Leah replied, Do we still have any share in the inheritance of our father's estate? Does he not regard us as foreigners? Not only has he sold us, bam, Laban sold his own daughters. Does that sound like a just man? Huh? Just asking you a question. Is that how um, the children of God act? They, they sell their daughters for profit. They put people to work. They use your, their daughters as commodities. Nothing's changed. To this day, that's what we are. We're nothing but commodities. Both male and female. This system has enslaved us, folks. Has enslaved us indeed. So he's telling him about his breeding season and that he saw in a dream and God talked to him. And he said, here I am. He looked up all that Levin had been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. Then Rachel and Lent, they replied, I'm sorry, this is why I got to do this. Mark these things. Father's estate. Does not he regard us as foreigners? Away from our father belongs to us and our children. So do whatever God has told you. Then Jacob put his wives and his children on camels. And he drove all his livestock ahead of him, along with all the goods that he had accumulated in Padan Aram, to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Laban had a... When Laban had gone to shear his sheep, Rachel stole their household gods. Wow, folks. Rachel stole. So now, this here, what is that called? A thief. Holy shit, Rachel's a thief. Not only is she a thief, she stole lowercase gods. She was 430. Elohim is his name. Elohim. Many gods. All right. Many gods. Mankind. Right? Created on the Sixth day. Nobody talks about this. It's the biggest key in everything is understanding that Elohim is many gods. And who are the many? Mankind that was created on the sixth day. They consider themselves God. They've created a reality construct that they think that they're gods. So Rachel has stole their house gods. So clearly... Uh, Levin, folks, he's got idols that he's worshipping. Of course, the Creator probably set him straight with Jacob. Well, we got so much to learn here. I mean, so much to think about. So much that's been said. 
Rachel stole the household gods. How do you do that? <laughs> when God is a spirit. Oh, she stole the idols. Because Elohim, this one here being many God, and that being mankind, these are idols. Okay? These are images. You understand? Images are what? Phantoms. Which are what? Ghosts. And what is the ghost? What are our bodies? They are hosts for the ghost. What's a ghost? Never going to stop saying it, guys. It's the spirit of the dead. Okay? Those beings that were created on the sixth day of creation in Genesis 1.25, when God creates the beast of the field, each according to their kind, are those that consider themselves God, Elohim, many gods in one. Very, very crafty. Okay. Moreover, Jacob deceived Laban in the Arabian by not telling him he ran away. So, fled with, so he fled with all he had, crossed the Euphrates River, and headed for the hills, hill country of Khalid. On the third day, always the third, it's always a third, always a third. Please, folks, there are things when they talk about in the Bible that are metaphors, okay? They're uh, allegories, okay? They're not meant to be taken literally. And then there's stories in the Bible that are meant to be taken literally. Like this man here, mankind created on the sixth day that's created in an image of God, okay? This is both figuratively and literally. You've got to understand how deep and complex it is that you are an image. What does that mean? It means that you're nothing more than an image of God, the same thing, that comes off that television set. Aren't isn't Satan always trying to duplicate what God is? So the television set was the first technology that would have come into green screen. And then as technology is advanced, what did we come to? We st we came into the smartphones and then what did they come or they came into the the green screens, right? You have these green screens. And then the green screens are what? They can manipulate things on these green screens. They can create these CIG, uh, CGI settings that uh, are fake, but they look real. I'm telling you, the, the way that they keep going, eventually they are going to try to say that they've went to Mars. But I'm 60 years old, right? If I lived another 20 years, then they're going to be talking about this shit another 20 years. And they've been talking about going back to the moon forever. They talk about all the stuff that they're going to do, but they never do it, folks. It's never done. They talk about building a wall. They take the money. They collect the money. They increase the taxes, and then the wall never gets built. Okay, over and over and over. They show you these droves of people that walk across um, border lines. You need to understand that those are all paid shields. Those are all part of the system. Those are people that are gathered together and their governments are saying, hey, we're going to go out there and we're going to do this. It's a fake fucking show. There is no fucking such thing as these fucking people that are migrating from Mexico across the border and all that shit, man. The wall's never going to be built. So we know that Elohim is many, many gods in one mankind created on the sixth day. And on the third day, Laban was told that Jacob fled, taking his relatives with him. He pursued Jacob for seven days and caught up with him in the hill county of Galeed. Then God gave to Laban in a dream at night and said to him, Be careful not to say anything. 
not to say anything. Anything. Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. So the Lord has just said to Laban not to say anything. But clearly when I get this next part written up on the board, you're going to see that Jacob turns right around and... Uh, or he, he turns right around and he says something to Jacob. Which probably means more punishment for him to come later. <laughs> Back at verse 25. Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country of Galid when Leban overtook him. And Leban and his relatives camped there too. Then Leban said to Jacob, what? Then Laban said to Jacob, The Lord supposedly just said to Laban in the parables right before the last thing that I wrote that you aren't to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. You know how I take that? Turn your ass around and go home. Don't say anything at all to him. But here it is. Here you got Laban all of a sudden says to Jacob, what have I done? You deceived me and carried my daughters like captives to war. Wow. What a statement that is. Taking he's Really? His daughters? You've carried my daughters away? Does Is that what the value of... I mean, what line here are we talking about, right? This is Jacob. Folks. Okay, Levin's family. So pretty much now we've got to Abraham, Jacob, and uh or Isaac and Jacob. Hmm. Okay, you didn't even let me kiss my granddaughters or my daughters goodbye. You have done a foolish thing. I have the power to harm you. Hold on, man. Folks. God just said to Levin, whoever it was that talked to Levin said, don't say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. Turn around, get your ass, take your take your family, your relatives, or and all that, man. Just go. You understand me? Who's this Lord? Who's the Lord that's telling Levin not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad? So much for listening to the Lord. It seems that these people don't listen to anything. Hmm. Hmm. After all, this plane of existence is the plane of existence of good and evil. Now, I lived a life of crime, drugs, fornications, lying, cheating, stealing, cover coveting. I've done a lot. I've got a lot of sin and iniquity on my back. This is how you you repent earnestly. You turn from that all and. I know that the Spirit of God's on me because if the Spirit of God was on, wasn't on was on me, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd still be out in the world chasing after all the tail and everything. Okay. But your God, your Father, said to me, the God of your Father said to me, be careful not to say anything either good or bad. So now he's telling him not to say anything good or bad. He shouldn't have said anything at all. Now you have run off because you longed to return to your father's household. But why did you steal my gods? Now this is big. So Leban has other gods. So Jacob was serving a man for 20 years that worshipped other gods. Why do you think then maybe the Lord allowed this? Because clearly Leban has got to be a Gentile from uh, probably the Hammett tribe, if not the Hammett tribe, the Jepeth tribe, those that are in power today, Levin. So now we know that, uh, that Levin more than likely is a Gentile. All right? And Jacob served Levin for 20 years. And Levin profited off of Jacob's hard work. And the Creator, through that time, that 20 years, blessed Jacob. Even though he did some shenanigans to make the bulls and the rams and the goats, the strong goats, uh, 
breed with his his goats other than the white goats. Now you have run off because I longed for your father returns to your, your father's household. But why did you steal my gods? Which is huge. So he's also worshipping other gods. Gods? He's got other gods? So we know that Levin at this, Laban at this point in time, he is not a man of God if he has other gods beside him. True? Yes, that's true. So we can start lining up on the bloodlines who's not walking upright with the Creator, the Spirit. Jacob answered Laban, I was afraid because I thought you would take your daughters away from me by force. Wow, really? Really? Well, that would be a scary thing. You work with a guy for 20 years and he's like, he can't go. You're my slave, man. You're done, man. What are you talking about? You got my daughters? You're going to drive off with my daughters? You're going to just up and take my life from me? No, he, that's the way the Gentile are. They want to turn everybody into their slaves. They want you to work for them, labor for them, and they benefit the profits. And then them give you a little piece. You know? And that's the way it is with these, these dirty uh, sites. Okay. But Jacob answered, Libby, and I was afraid you'd take your daughters by force. But if you find anyone who has gods... That person shall not live. In the presence of our relatives, see for yourself if there's anything of yours with me. Anything of yours with me. And if so, take it. Now Jacob had not known that Rachel had stolen. Stolen. Huh. So they got other gods and Rachel is stealing. She's taking something without permission. Well, the real truth I'm thinking to myself is what kind of idols are these to Levin? Did he chase chase them down a seven day journey to chase these people down? Were these these idols of his uh, made of gold, pounded gold and silver and uh, valuable idols. Oh, is he putting value on an idol? Then we know that's not of God. And that he was trying to use Jacob and the Lord blesses, blesses Jacob. Clearly you can see that Jacob is being blessed through all of this. Had not stolen the gods. So you got Jacob who's stealing stuff. You, or you got Rachel, excuse me, that's stealing things. She's hiding the stuff underneath of her camel. I'm sorry, Dad, that I can't get up. I've started my period. I don't know, man. You drive seven days. I don't care if you're on your period or not. Get down. Get down off of that, man. I'm searching everything. Everything gets searched. Nothing gets unturned. Everything is getting turned over. If you're going to travel seven days because you think somebody stole your gods, you're going to damn make sure that you go through everything. There's nothing that's going to be unturned. So she was very sly. She just happened to be sitting on, on the things. Must have been one of the first things. Well, more even... <coughs> 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 More concerning to me is what's she going to say to Jacob after they get to their final destination and they start unpacking all of her stuff? Is she going to hide her gods in a closet? Or do you think she's going to set up an altar for him? Just a question. Huh? So Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the two female servants. But he found no household gods and put them uh, or nothing. After he came out of Leah's tent, he entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the household gods and put them underneath of her saddle and was sitting on them. Laban searched everything in the tent, but he found nothing. Rachel said to her father, Don't be angry, my lord. Bam, my lord. 
She's calling her father a lord. Okay? It's only one lord. Right? Dad? Well, don't be angry, Dad. Don't be angry, Father. Don't be angry. You know? That I can I mean, Lord ain't... Lord ain't welcome when you're addressing a man to me as a Lord. Okay? That I cannot stand up in your presence. I am having my period. So he searched and could not find anything in the household gods. Okay. Jacob was angry and took Levin to task. What is my crime? He asked Levin. How have I wronged you that you would hurt me or hunt me down? Now that you have searched all my goods, what have you found that belongs to your household? Put it here in front of your relatives and mine, and let them judge between the two of us. I have been with you twenty years now. Your sheep and goats have not, found, have not miscarried, nor have I eaten rams from your flock. I did not bring your animals to, I did not bring you torn animals by the wild beast. I bore the loss myself, and you demanded payment from me whatever was stolen that day or night. This was my situation. The heat consumed me during the day, and the cold the night. Yes, sir. The cold the night <laughs> and sleep fled from my eyes meaning that Laban worked him like a dog huh Seven, 14 years of, woo, boy people back then really were dumb huh works 14 years of your life for two daughters <laughs> That in America, if that happened, man, <laughs> you wouldn't have anything, man. <laughs> You'd be ass busted, man. <laughs> your two sisters would run off, man, with one another, with all your money and goods. The way these stories are written, man, they'd probably run off with one another and become bisexuals with one another. Well, we don't need men anymore. We don't need men. No, we don't need that shit. We got all your shit now. I'm so I'm so sick of women that are blind with scales on their eyes, not awake, can't figure this stuff up. Haughty, loud, proud, arrogant. <laughs> Fuck this nation, man. Whew. It was like this for twenty years, and I was in your household. That I was in your household. I worked for you 14 years for both your daughters and 6 years for your flocks. And you changed my wages 10 times. If God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had not been with me, you would have surely sent me away empty-handed. Whew! That's strong right there. He's telling him, you know what, screw you, I know how you operate. <laughs> That's what he's basically saying. But God has seen my hardship and my toils of my hands, and last night he rebuked you. Closing out. <clears throat> uh, verse 43, Laban answered Jacob, The women are my daughters, the children are my children, and the flocks are my flocks. All you see is mine, yet what can I do today about these daughters of mine, or about the children that the the children they have born come now let us make a covenant you and I and let us serve as a witness between us so Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar he said to his relatives gather some stones so they took stones and piled them up in a heap and they ate there for the heap by the heap Laban called it Yagur, Sahadutha, Sahadutha, and Jacob called it Galid. Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me today. That is why it is called Galid. It was also called Mizpah, because he said, 
May the Lord keep watch over you and me and when we are away from each other. If you mistreat my daughters or take any wives beside my daughters, even though no one is with us, remember, God is a witness between you and me. Laban also said to Jacob, Here is this heap, and here is this pillow, pillar I have set up between you and me. This heap is a witness, and this pillar is a witness, that I will not go past this heap to your side to cause you harm, and that you will not go past this pillar or heap to my side to cause me harm. <clears throat> okay. May God of Abraham and Nahar and God of the fathers judge between us. So Jacob took an oath in the name and fear of his father Isaac. He offered a sacrifice in the hill county and invited his relatives to a mill. After they had eaten, they spent the night there. Early the next morning, Levin kissed his daughters and his grandchildren and then he went upon his way and returned home. All right, folks. Uh, that's uh, a lot of, you know, going back and forth. I don't know. What do you guys think, man? Put it down in the comment section. Like I say, this is a learning experience. There's only a couple of people that I like to chat with about these things that, you know, I'm open to hearing what they say. Though... If you put it down there in the comment section and it uh, may fill in a puzzle piece or something that sets off a, you know, something inside of my head because the pieces, since we are the ones that fell away from the Creator, all of us obtain a piece of the truth. So uh, my gift was gifted to me to know the truth about Revelations 13, 18 and the creation story of um, those two that were created on the sixth day or the one that was created on the sixth day and then Adam and Eve who are also created later. Bow your heads and let's pray out. Our creator, the spirit that moves all things in place, please place your spirit upon anyone that may be listening to this message. May they call out for you, the eternal self-existing one, there is none like you, and I humbly submit before you all that I am. I lay my life down before you. I submit every cell and every fiber that comprises me of flesh, every ounce of blood that pumps through my veins. I am humbly before you. There is no part of me that does not submit to you and you alone. You are my master. That those hearing this message to the end find peace and blessings through you, the Spirit, the self-existing Eternal One, our Creator, the Master that moves all things in place. A Spirit. Shalom. This is White Raptor News Ministries.